So, patch 1.7 has arrived, and with it, lots of MIs have arrived, which can also be build defining. And today I'm gonna show you my first build focusing around one of those new items. This is a two handed asset Ring of Steel Baligor Witch Hunter, using the Baligor Scruncher from Baligor the Swamp King. So far, the build has been able to do all the dungeons in the main campaign, such as Steps of Torment, Bastion of Chaos, Pot Valbury, the Ancient Grove, and also the Tomb of the Heretic. Do SR 35 to 36 as well as SR 50 to 51 in hardcore. Since it's using a 2 ender, it features low attack speed, but at the same time, also pretty nice nuke damage through Shadow Strike and Ring of Steel, which are both maxed, and also a decent amount of poison damage, which helps with damage over time, which also allows you to use this character as a kiting character a little bit. So, like, you jump in, press ABB, Ring of Steel, and do as many attacks in between as you would like to, and then, if necessary, port out with your teleport skill and re engage later. And also kill Lokar, Burman clones, as well as Smoke Dragon. But let's talk about the skill allocation here. We are a Oculus and a Nightblade, making us a Witch Hunter. And Nightblade is definitely like the main source of mastery points here. So we have one point in ABB, giving us eight points here. We have actually a fully capped out Lethal Assault. Then we have maxed out Shadow Strike. In our case, only 18 out of 16. That's not really that high. And 21 out of 12 in Dallas Justifiable Ends, giving us some nice CDR, crit damage and also poison damage. Also we have Running of Steel to 22 out of 16, so that's also the max that we can get here. There is unfortunately not too much like Running of Steel gear in the game. There are definitely some other glass that you could use if you would like to, that give you like additional weapon damage to Running of Steel. But I chose to just put 22 points here and be fine with it. The build still has very decent damage. Also 8 points at the Circle of Slaughter to have 30% fumble, which is basically like the sweet spot for fumble, and also 27% crit damage. And also have plus 66% pierce damage, which will apply to this pierce damage before the conversion. So the still will basically give us 66% acid damage. One point in the Panatic Burst, because while well, we don't really need the total speed that badly, 12 out of 12 Shadow Dance, and one point into Elemental Awakening just for some Elemental Rest. Also we have Soft Capped Weight of Shadow and Soft Capped Nice Chill. You could also like pull some points here from the Mastery Bar and max out Nerd's Chill to like 12 out of 10, that's also definitely possible. But I chose to go for the raw stats here instead because my HP is not the highest for hardcore. Also one point into Blade Barrier, I actually like Blade Barrier a lot on this build because it does help a lot for Night Blades that have low attack speed and are kind of rotation based such as this one. 12 out of 12 Phantasmal Armor for the Pierce Rest, Freeze Rest, Petrify Rest, Threat Armor and also Energy Leech Retaliation. Really good defensive passive, especially later on. While leveling, I wouldn't put as many points here unless you need the Pierce Rust. Other than that, for endgame, it's really, really nice. One point in Anatomy of Murder. I mean, we're not really scaling Vitality or Bleed damage or a cunning based damage such as Physical, Pierce, Bleed or Internal Trauma. So one point here is good enough for me. Also one point into Merciless Repertoire. You could also like try to max this out for like the flat Poison damage. That would be very, very much possible as well. I have actually not tried that yet, and maybe you should try it, because it does sound very intriguing. Moving over to the Occultus side of things, I have 3 points of the Curse of Frailty, because 1 point would just not be enough for the duration and also radius. If you would like to have more points here for quality of life, feel free to again like pull some points here from the Mastery Bar, and put like this up to 4 or 5 or 6 points, right? Also 10 points at Vulnerability, obviously, for the Poison Resistance Reduction as well as 75 DA Reduction. Now Bloody Pox is actually only used on this character, because we are using the Call of the Venom Blade, which gives me another 10% acid RR to Bloody Pox. If I was not using this one, say when you're for example using a full SR set instead, then I would not be using Bloody Pox either. So one point here, one point here, and one point here, because I'm using the Car of the Venom Blade for the 10% Poison Acid RR. If I didn't have that, I would just pull all three points. Now we have Hard Cap Blood of the Reek to 26 out of 16. That's actually the only ability that we have at the Hard Cap here, but Blood of the Reek is really, really awesome, has a huge heal, Nice flat acid damage and huge OA as well as health regen. So this helps to build out a lot on all ends. And also 18 out of 12 Aspect of the Guardian, which gives me 15% Fizz Rest, enough Poison Rest for whatever content you would like to do, and also 114% acid add as well as Poison damage, which is a last level boost on top. This is mostly used for the physical resistance though, and unfortunately when you are not dual wielding, you will lose out on the strongest synergy that Witch Hunter usually has, which is Physical Resistance, because you can get Physical Resistance from both Oculus and Nightblade if you are dual wielding, and this guy is not, so we kind of need to at least try to get as much Physical Resistance here as possible to like try to make up for it a little bit at least. Also we have 12 out of 12 Possession. If you have more 
skip points for those, feel free to put more points here obviously because like the more points you get here the more absorption you will get and also more percent acid and poison damage you will get. Also a 3 to 5% chaos rest and 100% skill disruption resistance is also pretty nice. Considering this was rather a cooldown based night blade and not really a attack speed based night blade, you could obviously also go for Oathkeeper secondary and take for example path of 3 for more bonus CDR as well as ascension for flat absorption. That could also definitely work very well with this weapon and might even be better. The reason why I'm using this weapon on the Witch Hunter right now is because I did find a pretty sick one very early on and I also had just finished leveling a Witch Hunter prior to this patch hitting and so I was looking for a new MI to just fit into this Witch Hunter. So I was just mostly looking for a monster frequent that I can use nicely on a Witch Hunter here and well the new Baligor's Crusher is pretty nice and I get, get a Venom Fang of Corrosion as you can see which gives me plus 4 to Ring of Steel, Battle of Dreek and Lethal Assault because of the Venom Fang prefix. Moving on to the Devotions, I am using Abomination, Tainted Eruption proc, as well as Ugol as my tier 3s. For tier 2s I'm obviously using Rumor, the Mistress of Rumors, right, for the Acid RR, as well as Manticore for more flat RR. Then I'm also using a bunch of tier 1 Devotions, 3 of them with actives, such as Ghoulish Hunger for defense and lifesteal, like as a circuit breaker basically. The Scorpion Sting for flat D8 reduction, as well as some like poison acid damage. Guardian's Gaze for acid damage and lifesteal, as well as some poison damage and mainhand damage. The Spider for attack speed, casting speed, OA, spirit, etc. And also for 6 affinity. The Jackal for 60% total speed, also some physical resistance over here. And also 3 affinity. And also the Eel for 5 blue affinity and also like DA and dodge, and this also does synergize pretty well together with the Shadow Dance ability of Nightblade in a way. Okay, so let me also quickly show you how to make these devotions yourself in Grim Tools, right? So let's press undo here and do all these from scratch again. So first of all, I went with the Scorpion. The Scorpion is pretty nice for leveling as well for poison acid characters, and I put this onto Shadow Strike. Then next up, you could also already get the Eye of the Guardian if you feel like that is what you want to do. And you can use this onto, for example, ABB while leveling, if you are like starting out with a night blade as I did. The next up you want to aim for Murmur, the Mistress of Rumors. So for this you want 6 green, 6 blue and 3 red. Now for the reds you want to get the Jackal, and for blue you want to get the Eel. Now once you have these two, you can get the Rumor Devotion. And while leveling you can put this to wherever you want to, right? Um, if you're playing not played only still, you can for example put it to Ring of Steel. For endgame though, I use this on Curse of Reality, I believe. And while you're at it, you can also get the Manticore Devotion. And the Manticore Devotion is pretty nice for like additional flat RR and so some poison damage. Now for this one, you kinda need some additional skills, right? You can use this on Ring of Steel if you're playing Night Blade, you can use this on Bloody Pox if you're playing an Architus, or you could also Use this on Blade Spirits if you're leveling with Blade Spirits in top round. But if you're like playing dual wield, for example, while leveling, you probably want to like put 50 points into Nightblade anyway to get execution. And if you are at 50 points into the skill tree, you also should get Blade Spirit. And then you can put this into Blade Spirit pretty nicely. For endgame though, I did choose the Death Stalker to apply this. Actually, another thing that you can and also maybe should do while leveling is instead of getting the Jackal early on, you could also get the Ghoul instead, right, early on. The ghoul is pretty nice even for leveling, the circuit breaker is really awesome actually. Uh, you could get this before the jackal even to like give you some more safety while leveling. But if you feel comfortable without using the ghoul or like you don't really like playing around the ghoul that much while leveling, you can just take the jackal first as I showed you earlier. Right? In the end though you're gonna need both of them anyway and then you can also retake these two crossroad points, the red and the green here. Now you wanna make your way towards abomination and also the Yugo devotion. Now you already have the 8 red that you need for both of these, but you still need 20 greens, right? So for 20 greens I chose spider and hawk on top for like pretty nice attack speed here on the spider and also offensive ability on the hawk. Now with these last 13 points you can go for abomination and put this to like ring of steel and also you go all and put this to like a defensive proc, right? And the last two points will go over here for the HP as well as offensive ability and also over here for the percent acid damage and percent spirit. And there you go, now you have arrived at the devotions I'm using as well for my build. Alternatively, you could always also go for the Kraken, right? The Kraken should be a pretty nice boost offensively and defensively as well for a build like this. So what if you wanna include the Kraken here? What do we do here? We have to get rid of some blues and some reds, right? Because Kraken also gives us three blue and two reds, right? So if we take this, we will need still like two more blues and one more red, right? So one more red will be easy like this, but like three blues is gonna be a little bit challenging here. 
So for example, you gotta get rid of the points from Abomination and the Hugo Devotion here and go just for Eel again. But now you have like three blues too many. So another alternative here for offensive ability would be to take the Viper actually. The Viper would give you all the blues you need. You would have like nine rats instead of eight rats that you need. A little bit over the cap here on the rounds, but I would say this is fine and you would have some pretty nice away from Viper as well on top round. And if you compare the two Grim Tools, like one with the Kraken Devotion with the other one without the Kraken Devotion, you will see that the Kraken Devotion map has like a little bit more HP actually, more attack speed, slightly more weapon damage, 15% more crit damage, 2% more physical resistance, a little bit less dodge, and also most importantly less DA, right? So except for DA, the Kraken version looks way better. But if you can get like some decent DA on say Ryu green items, right, you can definitely go for the Kraken conversion without any problem here. Alright, let's move on to the gear. So we are using obviously the Balagor's Crusher. This is the core of the build. In this case I got a Venom Fang of Corrosion. There are many different ones you can get here. He's also very, 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 very easy to farm actually, I would say. Like the farming route to Balagor is very easy, right? You just go to the Burwich Village Rift, then you go over to the East March, and then you kill the Swamp King. It's basically the first boss that you will meet in the East March anyway, so... So yeah, because of that, this item should be very easy to farm. And with a new smart loot introduced in patch 1.1.7, a Venom Fang of Corrosion or similar, like, double poison acid affixes should be pretty easy to get now. For the helmet and chest, I'm using a two-piece Venom Blade set. This is always pretty like uh, solid when you don't want to use the SR set. You could always also play this character with the SR set. It would be definitely more defensive and give you like more HP as well as better CC resistances, but it will also like reduce your damage by a little bit. So in my case, I'm using for the shoulders the Zentarian's Shoulder Guard. I have a Thunderstruck of the Eagle, as you can see, this is pretty sick. Thunderstruck prefix gives me lots of Aether, Elemental and Stun resistances. So this is very, 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 very sick actually, but of the eagle is not really that great. It has some like flat attributes, which is fine, but not anything too amazing. So you can definitely find those or like a similar one that has stun resistance on top maybe, and that will be already like good enough for you. Farming Zentarian shouldn't be that hard in the main campaign, and you can also get this from SR runs or Crucible runs runs. For the amulet, I'm using a Conduit of Night's Whispers instead because of the plus three to all resistances and also flat health and energy. I wrote 3% physique on top of this, and also I wrote the Aether resistance, which does help me with my Aether resistance, and also I wrote the Blade Barrier suffix, or prefix rather, which is actually not the greatest, obviously. It does help a little bit on a build like this, but I would definitely prefer to get the, like, ass damage and more radius to ABB instead, that would probably be, like, overall way better than this. So, yeah, there's, like, another thing you can improve on here on this Conduit Amulet. Now another green item I'm using is the Basilisk Mark. This one is a double magic actually, so this one should not be hard to get at all as well. So the Basilisk Mark gives you plus 3 dollars justifiable ants, which is pretty nice for Shadow Strike, as well as plus 3 aspect of the Guardian, which is very nice when you're playing a Witch Hunter with Blood of Dree active front. Also it converts Pierce to Ass to Ring of Steel, which this weapon already does as well, so the conversion is kinda useless. But it also adds you like flat OA and DA to Blood of Dree, and also adds 30 seconds duration to Blood of Dree, which is actually awesome, so you don't really have to worry too much about recasting those compared to other Arcutus, right? If you were using a Dervish, I would definitely not use this model because it's not really needed for the Ring of Steel conversion anyway. And the last green I'm using is a Veloth Ring. I'm using, in this case, a Vigorous of Tormented Souls. So you can see that this one doesn't really have any acid synergy, but it does have 12% HP. And it, this did help me like get a decent amount of HP for Hardcore. And without this, I would definitely have less HP as you can see, 12.4k. I did play this character for a pretty long time without this ring though, so it can definitely be played like this as well. But it's way safer with this, I would say. And if you find, say, a Vigorous of an Acid suffix, that would be even better than a Vigorous of Tormented Souls, obviously. Or like any pre and suffix combination that gives you any type of, of like Acid damage as well as HP is way better than this, anyway. So again, yeah, that's not even a GG rolled Affix ring, but it can still work very well with this ring. Also, I'm using a Mythical Widow Sting. This one is a blue craftable ring, actually, which gives you also like acid damage, percent acid damage, attack speed, physique, pierce, and elemental res, as well as plus two to ABB and Blood of Dreek. This helps me hard cap my Blood of Dreek and also give me some decent pierce, elemental res, as well as attack speed and acid damage. You could also try to craft this for stun res to get like additional stun res instead of the physique. That might actually be better as well here. For the relic, I'm actually using the Death Stalker relic. If you want to be safer, 
You could also just use a Serenity Relic. Serenity will also give you like plus one all skills, but Death Stalker is pretty nice as well. It gives you total speed, health, percent acid, flat acid, and also percent petrifying and stun resistance, which is pretty great for a character like this as well. Also, the pet has a Aura of Darkness aura, which gives you another 10% poison acid RR. So that's pretty nice as well. The completion bonus that I got is definitely pretty, pretty bad. You can get something like percent DA or percent away here as well. That would be way better, obviously. So yeah, I got kind of unlucky on the craft. So again, this build has some more potential than it has as it stands here. For the belt, I'm using a Mythical Murmur's Kiss because for Witch Hunters, honestly, there aren't like any great belts, to be honest. So yeah, Murmur's Kiss is pretty much the best you can use, in my opinion here. It does convert fire and aether to acid, which is useless, like both of this is kind of useless, unless you want to play around the Uzin's Torch Devotion, right? Then it would actually help you with the fire to acid conversion. But I mean, even without it, it's still pretty nice because it does give you like plus 3 to lethal assault and plus 3 to aspect of the guardian, both of which are pretty nice abilities for witch hunters and also has some attack speed and OA and DA, right? For the pants, I'm using Mythical Nidalas Rack Wraps, mostly because of the bonuses to Shadow Strike, right? Via Nidalas Justifiable Ends. And also plus 2 to vulnerability, which is obviously pretty nice for a Arcturist as well. For the boots, I'm using Mythical Venom Spine Grease for, again, some Shell Strike bonuses via Nidalas Justifiable Ends, and also like a pretty decent Venom Spines proc. For the gloves, I'm using Mythical Viper Fan Grabs, mostly because of the insane offensive ability that can give you, and also flat poison damage, as well as percent acid and percent poison damage with increased duration, and also like some additional poison damage for Blood of Dweeg and attack speed for Blood of Dreig. If you want to play a little bit more around Ring of Steel though, I could also suggest you the Ring of Steel gloves that give you like more weapon damage to Ring of Steel, but they don't have like any acid damage I think, so I'm not sure. Like, they might be good though, and you might have to try them out because they sound pretty nice as well, especially when you're like playing a Dervish, because well, Dervishes don't get the Blood of Dreig bonuses here, right? So yeah, on a Dervish you definitely have some other item choices on a Baligor, Dervish, and Sternod. As pretty much always, let me also show you a dummy kill time here, right? Let's start at like 20 seconds here. So we're having a, well, 27 second uh, dummy Kutam, right? Which is not too bad for a build that has pretty low attack speed and also is focusing quite a bit on dot damage as well. Through like Nidalas, right, Ring of Steel, um, or rather the poison damage to Ring of Steel, right, on this weapon. And also flat poison damage to this Venom Fang prefix road, right? So yeah, for that it's not bad, I would say. Also let me show you the build a little bit in action here and the true endgame content, right, where you have to farm blooms, 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 blooms and more blooms. So, <laughs> yeah, let's start off with a small bloom run here. So, as you can see, he's a decent Bargol farmer, right? You can actually use this guy to farm blooms. It's not bad for that at all. And also, the Shadow Strike ability. Makes pretty much every night blade a decent like farmer for main campaign. To be honest, like um, all shadow strike night blades, which is pretty much every single night blade, right, are very good for like main campaign farming because of their ability to like quickly move through maps, right, and also like this burst stability from the sky, like this burst damage of the sky is pretty nice for that as well. Also, I have actually not fought this guy yet, so let's see how we fare against Kraval here. This might be a little bit more chaos, because we don't really have too much threat absorption, except for our diamond and the head, right? But, uh, yeah, still pretty decent. He died pretty quickly, actually. Also, this guy has a shrine here, which, by the way, is a scam, right? Like, three blooms? What? Three blooms is way too much. I want to farm blooms, I don't want to lose blooms, right? Also since the MIs got buffed, right? Or rather their affix drop chances got buffed. And also we have Smart Dude now. 
You should probably always do Angel and Axe around now whenever you're doing blooms if you want to play a bird that has the ability to equip a Storm Strife, Flame Strife, or Chest Strife. Because, well, yeah, as I said, the effects are easier to get now, and Chest Strife especially can be really, really sick for like cold base, not base, right? Alright, this time she's not gonna drop anything, right? She has a preserver weapon. Never lucky. So I also found Cooper Cobra over here. Let's see how we fare against that guy. Should be a decently easy fight, right? Hopefully. Won't class. <laughs> Maybe not. Honestly, the plants are kinda annoying to be honest, right? These plants over here, yeah. If you're fighting Kuba, you should try to fight him alone, right? not with all, all these plants on top of it. Uh, so, yeah, my ghoul and them proc there. But I mean, they are there to proc, and if they proc, just keep on attacking, because you're gonna be, you're gonna be like extra safe when they proc, right? Alright, let me show you some real income content here with the Tomb of the Heretic, right? So we are afflicted and enemies are crumbling. Afflicted means I have basically no HP, right? Afflicted is one of the worst materials for this uh, character, actually. Alright, let's see how we fare against the Magos this time. Last time I had a Zethrus in here, right? That was kind of us. We have another Zethrus in here. Also sure of. Um, I should have probably like started to kill Zephyrus first. Oh, we applied some poison to you. Oh shit. Yeah, don't get debuffed like this, right? Do not get hit by the rocks, right? Uh, you can like safely switch aggro between the two on a bed like this because you will apply your poison damage, right? So, um, yeah, it's not too bad to like switch targets. Alright, let's see how we fare against this uh, room here again. This was a little bit monkas the last time, but we were able to actually face tank all of it here in the middle, right? So we can do that again. And now the two signs are joining, now it's starting to get really sketchy here. As long as we have our ghoul up and our diamond up right now, we should be fine, right? As long as we have diamond up, we should still be fine, actually. And it's down now, but everything is already down, so yeah. You can actually just stand here and face take everything. Whenever you feel like uh, it gets in, it's getting a little bit too scary for you, you can always just press the blade barrier button, right? Or just pot out, right? I mean, you don't have to like face thing on this guy at all. Because you have lots of poison damage taking anyway. Also with this shop you should always make sure to buy the blueprint of a conduit recipe if you are still missing some. And also you should always buy the purple melt here, right? Alright, Morganath, here we go. As long as you didn't proc your ghoul yet, there's like no reason to really go out of this fight. Because, yeah, once you have your ghoul active, you will be a lot tankier. And actually we got a Prime Ring of Morganath, which is pretty nice as well. And yeah, I mean, this fight is obviously a lot easier on, say, an Alpha Bird than, say, a Lightning Bird, right? And Lightning Birds kind of struggle against Morganath, unfortunately, because his Lightning are resistance is very, very high, actually. So even though this might have looked a little bit sketchy in the end, right, when he dropped me down a little bit. 
which is mostly because of the afflicted mutator around. This one is very scary for a build like this, actually. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, the fight was actually perfectly fine, I would say. And I mean, also, whenever you are fighting with the afflicted mutator, you can always just use like a word jelly essence, for example, to make up for the health loss, right? But yeah, we're gonna do local as well, right? And for the local dungeon, you also have to always check out your freeze resistance, right? And since freeze resistance is kind of bad on this character as he stands, you should use a half cross ointment whenever you enter this area, right? Because you don't want to try to like die to the traps here, right? You don't want to die to the traps here. Yeah, those traps over there, they can be really, really annoying. Well, luckily we don't have a afflicted mutator in this spot here, like in this dungeon. Last time I went here on this character, I did have a afflicted mutator here as well. It was pretty sketchy as well. Like, not super sketchy, but it was annoying. That's for sure. Oh, dark ones. Oh, yeah, nice. Because, like, if you get afflicted mutator and you get reduced HP from these oppressors, you will be down to, like, 8k HP, right? And that is just way too low. <laughs> what the fuck is this wrong? Double dark ones? Nice. Should I go for the, the fourth one to get like quadruple, I mean triple dark ones? No. Let's do that next time. I'm just here to show you the local fight, that's basically all right. So this local killer once again, and try to do him this time without any pots. I last time I did use not too many pots, I think only the elixir of Dragon actually. Let's try to do him without any pots this time. I mean the half frost ointment doesn't do anything against local, right? So this is basically a no pot fight here. And the build does struggle a little bit because he has like no flat absorb, right? But once you activate, for example, presenting diamond, and you do have flat absorb. What's that is down though, you will have to rely on your ghoul to heal you up, right? Now the ghoul is active, right? As you can see. Once the ghoul is down, you will have nothing, right? You just have to like blade barrier once. But then usually Joker should also die, right? If you kept on DPSing him throughout all that time, right? So, yeah, if you manage your defensive abilities, such as well, your heals, as well as Prismatic Diamond, and also the Ghoul proc, as well as Blade Barrier, well, then you can just kill him, like, in one go, right? You don't have to kite. Um, you can also just, like, kite, though, because, as I said, like, this guy has lots of poison damage, so, yeah, you could just, like, kite instead. So, yeah, anyway, that's gonna be it for this highlight video of the Spider Gore Witch Hunter. I hope you enjoyed it. And, yeah, the Balagor weapon is definitely one of the many new monster frequencies that you can make a build around, and it's actually pretty good even for endgame. And like the good thing about this item, or like the, all of these new green items, are actually that you can also use these items while leveling, right? You can just take uh, on the boss on, say, normal already, and farm these items, and you can start out the build very, very early into the game as well. So, like, I think Baligors should drop it around level 30, probably, 25, 30, something like that. So as early as like 25 to 30, you should also already be able to play around with a Balagor's Witch Hunter or Dervish. So yeah, thank you so much everybody for watching. Also thank you guys so much for supporting me on Twitch as well as on Patreon. You guys are the reason why I'm able to do these kind of videos. Thank you guys so much. And I hope to see you around on the next build as well. Stay tuned and this patch is awesome. We can do lots of builds here, so there are gonna be lots of builds as well.